It's a uh, 70 amp stick welder. I believe you purchased at Harbor Freight. And uh, to me, just looking at the box, it, it looks like it's a great hobby uh, unit to have in your garage. Uh, and it's very important to know that when you're doing things at home, generally you don't have the power that you would have at a shop. You have uh, mainly at your disposal 110 volts of electricity. Y'all know what 110 volts is? Yeah. Yeah, it's like you plug your hair dryer into it. And, and amps are what's important, uh, that you have the adequate operating amps that are running whatever plug you plug this into. But uh, when I open it up, I see uh, your owner's manual, and I see a lens for a, it's what we call a pipeliner lens. It fits the small lens helmet. Uh, it looks like it's a uh, shade number 11. You know, I told you about the shades that you want to wear, so that's ample protection for you. Uh, this is from the Chicago Electric Welding, uh, maybe the company that produces it. They give you a chart of showing what a bead looks like. Everybody knows what a bead is? It's kind of a slang term we use in welding. It's once you uh, run your bead with your welding rod or you run, you run your weld, what's left is called a bead. And you'll hear lots of folks talk about too fast, too slow, too high, too low, uh, and not enough amperage. So that's all given to you on this chart right here where you can compare your beads to that one. And then uh, in the back, it talks about a quick start guide to start your welders, okay? Uh, on a unit like this, there's not going to be just a whole lot of uh, things to set, but they do give you a chipping hammer and a brush. Uh, it's very important that when you run a bead uh, with your welding rod, the flux burns off of it and produces slag that protects your weld. This has a, uh, a very blunt tip on it. Generally, we want one with a sharper edge on it to get into corners but uh, you do have a uh, wire brush that you can brush it to. And then they send five electrodes. Does anybody know what an electrode is? Electrode is like the ammunition. You know, we talked about hunting. Well, in welding, you got to have the right ammunition or the right welding rod. And an electrode uh, is what burns away. You know, when you start welding, it starts up here, and then as you as you welding, your rod is gone. It's what becomes the bead that we saw right here. It's what's laid out on the metal. Okay, and you can buy many different types of these for different different types of metals, different types of uses. When we weld, we we've got three positions. We've got flat, overhead, and your verticals. Okay, and so, believe it or not, some rods are made for flat only. Uh, some are good for overhead to run your beads. Uh, overhead welding is kind of sketchy when you first start out because you're getting showered with sparks and people <laughs> kind of don't like that at first. That's why you have to wear the proper PPEs. But these are electrodes. And then they also have a number on the side of it. Tells you what they're good for. They have four numbers like a 60, 6010. Uh, 60 stands for Tensile strength, uh, it's like 60,000 pounds of tensile strength if the weld's done properly. That means that it's hard to break, okay? And then and you have position and polarity, well, your next two numbers. Now then we also have, looks like the handle to the unit. looks good. They always look good right out of the box. When they've been in your shop for a while, they tend to gather up the dust and things from welding. But uh, just like I told you, it's got 110 volts, so you ought to be able to plug that in at home if your breaker's got the adequate number of amps. I saw something else in the box. This is your face mask. You pop your handle into the face mask. It never works 
just right when your own camera does it. You'll catch it later. And then your lens pops in right there, and then you can hold that. If you're, if you're like me, I like to weld with both hands. I can be, I can be steady with both hands. Uh, so that's why I like the helmet that's got the headband. Then you have what's called the stinger and the ground. And you always have to clamp your work. So whatever you're welding on, you have to put this clamp on it. And then you put the electrode right there. And it's got presets on it where you can do it however. Sometimes you might bend the rod if you have to reach in there in a certain area and do a bead. So that's basically this welder in a nutshell. Uh, they never used to be this small, but as technology evolved, uh, we went from big bag cell phones. Has anybody ever seen one of those? The first cell phones were huge, and then they got real small. Now what are they doing now? They're getting big again. So I think welders, we, they get them small for a reason, but we still need the big ones. So that's that. I'll explain that grounding with you. Uh, we'll do the project and then we'll split up. But a uh, young man brought an airplane that we uh, 